my channel if you have been here before and thank you for being here if this is your first time here. My name is Saskia and this is my YouTube channel. I will start off by saying that this video is going to be a story time. I'm not going to be telling you guys how to sell your panties on Craigslist for money. Uh, I don't do it anymore and the things, the way I did it has totally changed. You can't do it like that anymore. So. If you're here for tips, I'm sorry, but that's not what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a weird story that spans over 10 years. <laughs> so if you wanna hear that story, let's just jump into it. When I was 18 years old, in my second year of college, and a friend of mine for the sake of this video, I'll call her Celine. So we were in class together and we were talking about like selling your underwear online because obviously it was already something people talked about 10 years. We weren't the first people to do it. Uh, we were just talking about it in class and we were like, we might as well try, you know? So we just put an ad up on Craigslist and it literally said, use panties and it, we charged $40 and it said, we are two petite 21 year old students who want to sell you their dirty panties we will wear any style you choose let us know hope to hear from you soon something like that something really really simple honestly within the first like 12 hours we got over 100 replies it was a little bit overwhelming i remember the phone i had at the, that point was like one of those little blackberries um and I had smashed it so only some of the buttons worked. So I was like trying to respond to these messages while we were like in class and stuff and it was so hard on my shitty little phone and I had to turn my data on and then turn it back off really quick because I didn't have, like it wasn't the same 10 years ago. I know that sounds really stupid but it wasn't. Like now I'm, I'm on my phone using internet all the time and it's not a big deal but at that point it was not easy for me to be on my phone sending and receiving emails all day. I'm just saying that because it was so complicated uh, because of how many times you had to email back and forth with someone trying to like set something up. It was so complicated. So we decided to just meet people at metro stations because we felt like if we were going to meet someone in public, a metro station was safe. It was a place we could easily get to. It wasn't too out of the way for us because we could just get off at a stop, meet them and get back on and go somewhere else. It seemed like a safe way to do it because at that time we weren't gonna do any kind of like PayPal and mailing the panties. Uh, most people wanted to meet us in person anyway and that was like a big part of it. <laughs> we would meet people at the metros. Probably like the first five times no one showed up. Uh, I feel like people love to fuck around with you on Craigslist. Maybe they didn't even believe we were real. Uh, so people wouldn't show up, but then finally someone did. So we would always put our panties in like a little Ziploc bag and then put the two Ziploc bags in a gift bag. We made it a rule that if you were gonna buy, you had to buy a pair from each of us and we always went together. So we met this man at the Metro. I say Metro because I live in Montreal. So that's what we call it here, but that's just like the subway or like underground train or whatever you call it. So we met him um, and he eventually received the nickname OG Panty Sniffer because he was the OG, he was the first one who ever met us. And then he would meet us probably uh, once every month or once every two months for a little while to buy panties from us. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of nondescript, older man, not older, maybe in his 40s, older than us at the time. And yeah, we would just see him, give him the bag, he would give us our money, and we'd say thanks, bye. It was really nothing more than that, and um, all he had was a fake email address, so we felt like that was like relatively safe. In retrospect, now I don't think I would do that anymore. I think I was a little like more of a risk taker when I was a little younger, but that's what we did. <laughs> So that was OG Fanny Sniffer. We eventually met another Fanny Sniffer that we started calling $50 Man because every time he would meet us, he would have $50 bill for each of us. So we charged $40 for each pair of panties 
And this guy would always show up with two $50 bills and he'd always be waiting, holding a book, reading a book. And when we would see him, he would like pull the hundred dollars, two fifties out of the book he was reading and hand it to us and take the gift bag. And um, yeah, we just thought that was funny that he, he kind of threw a little tip in there every time, which was really nice. Uh, so he got the nickname $50 man. So $50 guy kept buying from us every month for a while, over a year. And at one point it was October and when he was setting up his order for that month, he messaged me and said that Halloween was his favorite holiday and asked if there was anything special that we could do for him for Halloween. So we said that we would be willing to sell him a Halloween costume and both of us will wear it for a little while and each he'll eat also receive a photo of each of us wearing the costume. So Celine and I went to a costume store and we bought a squirrel costume <laughs> that was on special for $80. That night Celine wore the squirrel costume to sleep and I took a photo of her wearing it and the next day I put it on and she took a photo of me wearing it and the next day we sold $50 man, the squirrel costume, the photo of Celine wearing it, and the photo of myself wearing it for $300. And the costume cost us $80. So we made a good profit on that. It was really easy and it was really funny. Um, <laughs> I think somewhere I still have the pictures of us in that squirrel costume, but like I said, this was like nine years ago now. So I don't know if I'd be able to find those photos, but. That was definitely the weirdest, the weirdest version of selling panties that I've ever done. <laughs> and so those two people were probably the only people that we sold panties to repeatedly over years. Um, it went on consistently for about a year and then after that it was a lot less consistent because we had to be putting posts on Craigslist all the time and checking them and answering emails and stuff. And so it wasn't something we were doing all the time. Over the past 10 years, I'd say I've probably made about $5,000 Canadian from selling panties, uh, socks, pantyhose. The thing about it is like once you meet someone who's into that and they like you, they're probably going to keep buying <laughs> whatever it is that you're trying to sell. I think a lot of the time it's uh, the fetish isn't even not even about panties a lot of the time I think it's about domination and the fact that these men want to feel kind of like used and to me that story doesn't even sound that crazy because it was just like part of my life and I got a few of our friends into it too at certain times like we would meet um, someone would buy, buy a pair from one of all my friends like one time we met all five of us me and my four closest friends at the time at a metro station and a guy bought from each of us. Yeah, I mean, it's a quick 40 bucks, which is <laughs> nice when you're poor and you're in college and you have like literally no money. Yeah, we would go to the dollar store and pay $2 a thong usually and then sell it for 40. So that was like a really good profit margin for us. Um, I mean, we did waste a lot of time waiting at metro stations for people that never arrived. Uh, so some time wasted for sure, but we were hanging out. We were like, just me and my friend hanging out during the day, going and doing that weird shit. So it didn't seem like time wasted at the time. So the whole reason I say I'm not giving you any tips on how to do this is because we did it all through Craigslist personal ads and that doesn't exist anymore. You can no longer put an ad up the way we used to. I have managed to get a few ads that stayed up for a little while, long enough to get a reply in the past couple of years, but almost all the time when you post an ad saying use panties, it gets flagged and removed within, usually within an hour. So it's not the same after SESTA FOSTA was passed in 2018, uh, everything's been a little bit different for online sex work if you would consider selling your panties online sex work, which I do. I think to me that was kind of like my first, you know, getting my toes wet in sex work. 
I had never stripped yet at that point, obviously. So yeah, this was the first like little risky thing I did. But yeah, so that's the story about how I sold my panties on Craigslist. And I hope you guys thought that was an interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I don't know if I'm gonna post this. Maybe I shouldn't post this. My mom knows, but like not everyone in my family knows. So sorry guys, sorry relatives who are gonna see this, who wish they hadn't seen this. I am who I am. <laughs> All right, take care guys. See you in the next video. <laughs>